Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak again, and in this video I'm going to talk about, uh, someone asked me, could I explain about how I dose my plants or do I fertilize my aquarium, and yes I do. In fact, I fertilize it every single day with a few drops of fertilizer that I mix up, basically Flourish Iron and Potassium. Now the potassium I use is potassium glutinate and I put about six tablets in a little bitty bottle along with iron, shake it up and that's what I use. Potassium, the flourish potassium is potassium sulfate. Potassium sulfate is an acidic potassium. They're both considered to be potash where potassium glutinate is considered to be an organic potassium which is used in cultivated plants, uh, you know, in agriculture, floriculture, you know, greenhouses and stuff like that. So, and plus the fact of it is, uh, potassium glutinate you can buy at any store, uh, in your drugstore, and sometimes you can buy like two for one sale, buy one, get one free, and the flourish potassium is pretty expensive. So the next thing I also want to talk about is I test. And in case anyone's wondering, I use test strips, but I also have some very expensive test kits that I use professionally. And most professionals will use Lamont. Okay, DVMs, limnologists, uh, labs, they'll use Lamont test kits. And uh, hobbies can buy these test kits, of course. They're going to cost you 45 50 bucks, 60 bucks a test kit, though. Even the refills are like $35 for these test kits. They're very expensive, they're very accurate, and they are dangerous. Uh, that's why they're more used for professionals, and the hobby does not use them because they have poisons in them. A lot of them have poisons. But this is the most accurate test kits a hobbyist can buy are, are these Lamont. And if you want to test for your phosphates, nitrates, ammonia, this is the test kit to buy. This is what I use in my research and everything, Lamont. And this is something a hobbyist can buy. But just remember, uh, some of the regions that are inside of this test kit are very poisonous. And they need to be kept out of reach of little children. As you can see, there's the skull and crossbones. So, but... This is more what professionals would use. But anyhow, I test with Lamont for my nitrates and phosphates to keep them at zero. And I fertilize every single day. That's right. Every single day I fertilize my aquarium. But I fertilize my aquarium only during peak photosynthesis. Peak photosynthesis is not when you turn on the lights and an hour later the plants are starting to pearl. No, that's not peak. It takes a few hours for the plants to get up to speed and to they have peak photosynthesis. And only during peak photosynthesis do plants convert nitrates into ammonia. And that's the same way as if you use the incorrect iron. Maybe you may have iron in your water. It will be during this peak time that the plants themselves will convert the iron and make it into a ferric iron so they could utilize it and this is what plants do. So nitrogen has to be converted to ammonia. A lot of the fertilizers of the day still contain nitrogen and phosphates. It's absolutely ridiculous that anyone would buy a fertilizer with nitrates in it or phosphates in it but it's still being advertised. It's still out there to the public People are making brand new fertilizers today that still use nitrates and still have phosphates in it. Don't buy those fertilizers. That's that. That's for terrestrial plants. That's not for aquatic plants. Look at it this way. Your whole bacteria culture that you have in your tank is, is doing what? It's taking ammonia, converting it into nitrites, and converting it into nitrates. Why would you add more of what's already being made to your aquarium. Why would you add more? And I've heard of these people using these high nitrate fertilizers or these fertilizers with nitrates in it coming up with 80 parts per million nitrates 
Did you ever think why you have the algae or cyanobacteria? It could be because the fertilizer you're using has nitrates in it. Stay away from nitrate fertilizers. You have nitrates. You're producing nitrates 24-7 in your aquarium. Let the plants utilize it. The problem is the plants have to, use, have to utilize it, but there's some ions that are real important to the plant. One is a potassium shortage. The next one that's real, real important is iron. There's been several studies about this, how plants will grow better, greener, uh, thrive. Uh, like, like, for example, what you're looking at here is, uh, you know, the, the Monte Carlo here. The first thing you would think of, this isn't that fast of a growing plant, and it's very easy to get it covered full of algae and get it destroyed. But look at this. This is the latest photos of my Monte Carlo. You don't see any algae on it. And I fertilize every single day. If you want to call it fertilize, what I'm doing is just adding iron back in. It's not a fertilizer as per se because there's no nitrogen in it like you would add to the ground, right? You want to make your grass green, what do you, what do, you do? You buy uh, Scott's and what does it have in it? It has high nitrogen. 27% is, is, is nitrogen. You don't want nitrogen. You want iron. You want potassium. So... That's what keeps the algae off these plants, even though they're in extremely high light. Yes, I'm using Seal True. That's another fertilizer that is needed. Uh, plants highly need some form of Seal 2 to get into the tank to really, really photosynthesize at their peak. Now, if you're not using Seal 2, then you have to be more cautious on how much iron and potassium you're putting in your aquarium because it won't use it. It won't utilize these ions as if you have a tank like this one where the lights are extremely bright from the aquarium lighting I'm using and I'm using CO2 at about 10 or 15 parts per million. In other words, it's not as high as a lot of uh, people do theirs. And that's why it looks like the little bubbles in there, because that's all basically the CO2 being injected into the water. But you're not going to get the growth from your plants, or Monte Carlo or your baby tear. You're not going to get the growth if you're not using CO2. It would be very slow, and it may not grow at all, and it may even start dying on you, or it may just start melting away. But as you see, this is growing, and, it, and it's starting to take over. And it's doing a great job. But you have to remember when to feed your plants. Now, I feed my plants every single day, but I feed them during only peak photosynthesis. And that's at least four hours after the lights have been on. Four to five hours. That's when plants will be up to their peak photosynthesis. Okay. Then I add a few drops to the tank. How many drops, I can't tell you because I don't know what kind of plants you have, how much CO2 you're using, how much light you're using. These are all variables that I, I, I don't know. So I can't tell you how many drops per gallon. All I know is you've got to feel it out according to your lighting situation and the amount of CO2 you're using and the plants you have. Then... Why are you doing this? Why are you only adding the iron and all during peak photosynthesis? Well, I use carbon, and I make no qualms about it. The carbon will eventually take out the chemicals that you just put in as far as the iron and stuff. They may take it out, but during peak photosynthesis, the plants will utilize that iron, and that's what you want. You want them to utilize it and get it out of the system. You want it to them to utilize the potassium and get it out of the system. Why? So algae and cyanobacteria doesn't utilize it. Because once the lights shut down, peak photosynthesis continues on for a little while and then it shuts down. Well, it's not utilizing what you just put in your tank and therefore algae and cyanobacteria can utilize it. And if you remember, I told you, cyanobacteria doesn't need light. So they will utilize the iron and potassium that you put in there. 
they will compete with the higher order plants. So these are the two I use. These are the only two I use. What about the other trace elements or micro elements, if you want to call them? Most of that gets put in by if you add water to your aquarium. Most of those can be added in there. And sometimes some people will have like a, a supplement uh, which will add some supplements back into the aquarium uh, that you can buy. But th those will be utilized sparingly, especially if the tank gets older. But basically, these are the two that I use. Only add a few drops during peak photosynthesis, and that's it. So, I hope this video has helped you. So, but there's one thing I will say in ending this. Stay away from nitrates and stay away from phosphates in your fertilizer. You don't need any more nitrates and phosphates in your fertilizers. If people are doing that, that's that's like so 1960s. Okay, back in the 1960s, that's how they made fertilizers. Don't use it. Anybody who's doing that to you, uh, I don't know why they do it, but they must not care very much about the hobbyists when they do it. All I'm saying is stay away from it. Treat it like it's the bubonic plague. Those old style fertilizers you don't need. I mean, you're producing nitrates constantly 24-7 through the biological action of your substrate, canister, filter, whatever. Why would you add more of what's already being produced free? Think about that. Why would you add more nitrogen to a tank that's already producing nitrogen 24-7? Doesn't make sense, does it? Because most plants lack iron, potassium, magnesium, manganese. These are the things that they lack. Nitrates, no. Ammonia, yes, plants want ammonia. And remember, nitrogen is only taken during peak photosynthesis and converted back into ammonia. So these are things that plants look for. What's more readily available to them is ammonia and they need the iron. And that was proven by Hulse and Kipper that iron is very, very uh, a vital ion that is needed by plants. So that is what I put in. I do it every single day. Uh, my lights come on at 1 o'clock and about 6, 7 o'clock in the evening I put a few drops of fertilizer into the sump, maybe 10, 15 drops, and that's it. I do it every single day. That's how I fertilize my plants. As you notice, the Flourish Iron says right on the bottle, no nitrates and no phosphates. See, manufacturers have gotten smart. Some of their fertilizers say no nitrates and phosphates because they know it really isn't needed. But some manufacturers are still pulling the old trick on hobbyists, putting nitrates and phosphates in there. Because the unsuspected hobbyist thinks, oh, this is going to make my plants grow, the nitrates. Well, you have plenty of nitrates. But, so, buyer beware when you buy any kind of fertilizer that has nitrogen in it and phosphates in it. Phosphates are coming from your food. Nitrogen's coming from the, already the biological activity that's happening in your canister and your filters. And, and if you have a hang on the back filter, uh, it, it's already happening where you're producing nitrates. Don't add more of what already exists, okay? In our aquariums, because they're closed systems, we want to add less. And I will say this. When you add nitrogen to your aquarium, you're making it ethropic. Ethropic aquarium is an aquarium that takes over 100 plus years in a pond to become. You've done it just by adding that fertilizer that has nitrogen in it. So you've damaged your aquarium and did a hundred years or a thousand years worth of damage in just a few seconds. So until next time, I uh, hope you learned something from this video and uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.